And welcome to Ducks No Sports. This week, we're talking about Week 11, the CFL, of course, post-Labor Day. Now we get to see who the real contenders and who the pretenders are for the Grey Cup. And all the matchups this week were rematches from last week, so it should be interesting. And it should be pretty easy to pick because last week was a pretty good week, and I expect this week to be even better because I expect more competitive matchups than there were last week. But we'll start with our first game, the Calgary St. Peter's. Traveling down to the Edmonton Eskimos. Uh, of course, a rematch from the Battle of Alberta last week. Uh, we'll start with the uh, Stampeders here. Wow. Whew. Are, are they looking good right now? I mean, I haven't been very high on the Stampeders, as you know from my past videos. Not very high on the Stampeders. Didn't really like them since Drew Tate going down. But they've really rebounded well with Ke Kevin Glenn. I mean, what a star. I mean, what a guy. What a, what a star this guy has become. I mean, playing really well right now. And doing all the little things to win games, you know, closing, know how to cl cl close out games, you know, moving the sticks, you know, getting key first downs when they really need them. What a good veteran QB's done and not playing out of his head right now just because he's got such a beast at the running back position in John Cornish. I mean, this guy's, in my opinion, is the best running back in the CFL now. I mean, this guy seems to get over 150 yards every game and he's really stepped his game up since calling out his offensive lines, really stepped his game up and... The Calgary St. Peter, this might sound crazy, the Calgary St. Peter's might be the team to beat BC in the West. Because if you can run the ball like they can, you can keep Travis Louie off the field. That'll be interesting, but that's a matchup down the road. But this week, they're playing an Empton Esco team who I've been very high on all year. I really thought they could challenge BC, but clearly I'm wrong. Because clearly there's just something wrong in Edmonton right now. Their offense can't do anything. You know, they had Steven Giles. He didn't do anything, so they they pull him and put in uh, Kit Carey Joseph. He played even worse. Last week, did not like the way he played last week. And this defense is still a great defense. I still think the best defense in the league. And I still think Edmonton Eskos can be that team to challenge BC, but they have to really step their game up. They, they just got to score. That's what comes out. They have to score. And didn't really make, I don't really understand why they trade Carr, you know, one of their better receivers, in my opinion, to the uh, Rough Riders this week. I mean, didn't really understand it, but we'll see what happens. And... For this team to be successful, this team will have to run the ball with their three-headed monster with with uh, Boyd, M Messub, and uh, Q Ch Charles. And I expect them to get back to the basics and just run the ball and play solid defense. And that's the only way this team is clearly going to win because their passing game is just awful. And I expect and I expect the Edmonton Eskimos, even though they did not win last week, I expect the Edmonton Eskimos to win this week by running the football, playing great defense, even though I like the way Calgary is going. But... I think the Empton Eskimos get it all together this week and take this game and win this game by, say, a late field goal. And our next matchup, the rematch from the Battle of Ontario, the Hamilton Tire Cats this time traveling to Toronto, take on the Toronto Argonauts. Hamilton Tire Cats, you know, I've been very high at Tire Cats all year. I really thought they were a great cup caliber team. And I'm starting to lose my faith week in, week out, because it's clear this defense, we've been saying it, this defense sucks. And for guys like Ray and, uh, Ray Williams to come out and just say, "Well, we'll be fine. We get the key. We get, we get, we always get off the field at key times." Well, it's clearly not true because the last two weeks, you've had a chance to end games against the Montreal Alouettes and Toronto Argonauts, and you couldn't do it. I mean, Tigers take a late lead against the Alouettes a couple weeks ago. All you had to do was stop Calbio. Couldn't do it. They march down and get a last like a field goal. Tigers go up late. Uh, against Toronto or tie the game and then you can't stall them as Ricky Ray did anything he basically wanted in that fourth quarter I mean really played bad and for, on offense there there's you know there's still the, the inconsistencies are trying to are starting to get to me now I mean Henry, Henry Burris has been up and down all year I mean some weeks he's on some weeks he's off I know he's had great stats but stats lie sometimes because this all year he just hasn't consistently got it done and their best offensive weapon has to be Chris Williams and their best offensive and that and that's a guy on special teams. It shows you, you know, how inconsistent this uh, this team has been. And for this team to be successful, Henry Burrows has to put his team on his back and take them to the pro 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 promised land. And I don't know if he can do it because Henry Burrows isn't a spring ch chicken anymore. And I don't know, man. It's just it's getting pretty ugly in the ha ha hammer right now. And if they lose again this week, man. Uh, it's going to be season over because I really don't see how this team is going to go anywhere in the playoffs if they don't have home field. 
And for them to go to the Great Cup, it has the the East has to come through Ham Hamilton, and I just don't see it any other way. So this is a huge game this week for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and they have to get it done. Because on the other side, you have a Charlie Rock team who, who I've been saying, man, I love the way they're playing right now. You know, everybody, there's so much slack. There's so, Ricky Ray is getting so much hate on right now because, you know, he hasn't basically, you know, lit the league on fire. But um, to that, it's like... Get off his back. I mean, honestly, who who who's Ricky Ray throwing to? He's throwing a bunch of scrubs. He's throwing to Chad Owens and a bunch of scrubs. Not the offensive weapons he had with the uh, Eskimos through all his years. And I think he's had a great season. I mean, he's on pace to have like I think like the third highest passing uh, record for the Toronto Argonauts. Very impressive season. And on defense, man, whew, this defense. I just like I say, week in week out, Chris Jones can coach a defense up because this team just gets after you after you and after you all game long. Ricky Foley is, just, is turning into an elite lineman in the CFL if he wasn't already. And I really like strong Argonaut team, but I just think with Hamilton's with their backs against the wall this week, Argonauts are playing well, but I just think Hamilton with their backs against the wall this week are going to come with their best, their best game of the season, and, they, and then they're going to win this game by, I'll, I'll say, two scores. I think their offense will be clicking, and I think on defense they're going to be pissed off with a chip chip on their shoulder and they're going to play well. And shut down Ray, and I just need to help the Tire Cats take this game this week. And our next game, the Montreal Wets take on the BC Lions. We said last week, uh, Great Cup preview. And if that's the Great Cup, the Great Cup is going to be one hell of a game. Start with the Alouettes. You know, just every week they just get a little better. You know, Calvillo is just that consistent rock that's just always good. And he did it with basically his two top weapons out last week. Was he more impressive? You know, throwing for 300 yards plus. And now eight straight games, a new CFL record. And this week I expect the same. I mean, this team on defense just gets after you. And the defense, you know, start of the season were pretty crappy, but just every week just get a little and little better. And I expect that to continue this week. And on offense, they're going to do, do what they do, which is just be a great, great, great offense. I expect them to continue. I expect Calvillo to throw in for another 300-plus game. I don't think he's going to do it until, until he de de doesn't do it. And he's really playing well right now. Now, Calvillo might be the uh, the favorite now to an MVP, which is crazy because the guy's like a million years old. This guy is like a fine wine. only gets better with age. And the Montreal Wets are going to keep this train on rolling because they are clearly the best team in the East. And I'm going to say i got the BC Lions, clearly the best team in the West. And I've, we finally saw a chink in the armor last week from the BC Lions. We've been saying it. They've been getting off to slow starts. That's their slow starts in game. And eventually that's going to get you. And it got them last week. As you know, they didn't really get a touchdown to the s s second half. We are not really playing well. And Travis Lue, you know, he doesn't come with the game sl s swinging. And that's one thing I hate. That's one thing I don't like about Lue is that he kind of lets the game come to him. And he just kind of lets his defense keep him in games, and then just go in the game late, which is fine. That It's worked for him all year, but it did not work for him last week, and I expect BC to come up fine this week because I think they really want to show the Montreal Wets that they are the best team in the league still. And a lot of people got some questions, made the Montreal Wets are the best team in the league, and I expect the BC Lions to put one hell of a performance this week. I expect that offense to be still the great offense that they are, and I expect that defense to be that underrated great defense that they are, and I expect the BC Lions to beat the Montreal Wets by I'll say a late a late field goal in overtime. Yeah, I think it's be a tight game. And our last game of the week was the most the only game that actually sucked last week. I'll give the CFL credit. A lot of good games last week, but Scouts were Rough Riders and Winnipeg Blue Bombers were not one of them. Of course this is the famous Banjo Bowl. Um, okay, we'll start with the Rough Riders. Well, what a performance last week by their defense. I mean, Durant had a good game too, but Durant was in good field position every time he stepped on the field, it seemed like, because their defense were forcing turnovers, gave the Blue Bombers no air, no air to breathe, and just were just up and down, just kicking their butts all day long. And for Saskatchewan, I mean, it really showed, hey, maybe they still have a shot at making the playoffs. If they can play this good every week, then they will have a shot at the playoffs. I'm not saying they're going to win every game 52 to nothing, but the Rough Riders are playing really well right now, and I really like the way their defense is playing. In my opinion, still top defense in the CFL. I mean, up there with the Upton Eskimos, I mean, a really good defense. I mean, Willie playing good right now. And uh, 
Yeah, I like the Rough Riders. And on offense, I mean, their offense is pretty pr- pr- pretty ugly. I mean, obviously got 50 points last week, but and usually pretty ugly. I mean, they got so many injuries on the offensive line and a few injuries in their weapons. I mean, it's really um, it's really been an up and down season for the Rough Riders. Of course, got the hot start, but it's fallen off. And Saskatchewan should maybe have at least two more wins to to their credit, but haven't. And I expect the Rough Riders to have a really good game this week, and I expect the Rough Riders to put on a really good show in the Banjo Bowl. And the other side, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. What, what, what can you really say? You fire your coach. And then with your new coach, Tim Burke, comes in, and not good. You know, losing 52 0 first game. I'm not saying that Tim Burke's a bad coach, because I think Tim Burke is a really good de- defensive coordinator. But I said it last week. La Police did not have control of the room, and I didn't think a guy in the room could control the room. And it's pretty clear, you know, Tim Burke said he's going to bring more discipline to the team. You know, I'm going to take stupid penalties. And what was on the first half? Stupid penalty after stupid penalty after stupid penalty and undisciplined plays. It was pretty clear that the uh, Winnipeg Blue, Blue, Blue Bombers are, are just not a good team anymore. I mean, they went to the Great Cup last year. Good, good for them, but it's just clear they just are not a good team. They need to maybe reamp a lot of players on this team. They need to get a lot of a lot of. They have a lot of stupid players on this team, and stupid in the sense that they just take dumb penalties after dumb penalties. Do not like them, and it's pretty clear they need to reamp this team and, and cut a lot of players for this team to get this program back on track. And I just I just expect the same thing to happen this week. I don't really see Winnipeg ending the season that great. I think they'll be lucky to win a few games. Maybe they'll win a few games on the stretch. But nothing ma- major, and I expect this week they're gonna be stu- they're gonna be the same stupid uh, Winnipeg blue 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 bombers, and I expect the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to take the Banjo Bowl and win this game by three scores. It won't be as lofty as last week, but that but that was a beatdown for for the ages, so I don't expect it to be lopsided that much again. But Saskatchewan Rough Riders take this game and get back on track and maybe possibly go to the playoffs, but we'll see. What happens, week 11 should be good. You know, all rematches from Labor Day weekend should, should be interesting. But we'll see what happens. But until next time, I'm Aaron Duxbury saying I'm Ducks and I know sports. Yeah.